Hello and welcome to Saltland Gaming. Um, I'd just like to start off this video by uh, apologising for my lack of uploads in uh, in recent weeks. Uh, I've had quite a busy time. I won't bore you with the specifics of it, but um, just wanted to let you know. Like uh, I I'm not I'm not giving up basically. Um, I do intend to to get back into the swing of things and start uploading a bit more regularly, at least once a week. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, it's quite an exciting day today because I've just received um, two P500 products from GMT, which is uh, which is always nice. Um, one of which I think has been, a lot of people have been extremely excited for, which is, uh, what I have in front of me here, this is uh, Fall of Saigon, which is um, an expansion for uh, Fire in the Lake in the coin series. So that's the, the Vietnam War uh, game in the coin series, basically. Uh, one of my favourites, if not my favourite, it's kind of on the top spot right now between um, Fire in the Lake and A Distant Plane. Um, one thing I kind of didn't don't like so much about um, Fire in the Lake is that it didn't include this um, portion of the war. It just kind of covers U.S. involvement, which you know it makes sense. That's kind of historically the, the most not necessarily the most interesting time, but the most kind of relevant to explore for a, for a Western audience at least. Um, you know, not that the game's bad. I just think it can feel a little bit unsatisfying sometimes in the victory if you if you play up to the 1972 if you play up to 1972 using one of the scenarios it just kind of feels like something's missing um so i'm really glad they bought this out because clearly they they felt the same way um this isn't a, a game on its own you know you need fire in the lake to play this it's just an expansion but you could kind of argue that it is a new game because there's a lot of things in this game uh, which which haven't really appeared in, in any of the coin games at all, which I'm really excited to um, to get into and see how they work. So um, this was designed by Mark Herman and uh, Volkel Runke, who I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, you know, Mark Herman's like one of the, the godfathers of wargaming, basically, and Volkel Runke um, invented the coin system, which is one of my f uh, personal favourite uh, gaming systems. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. So Fall of Saigon covers the kind of last three years of um, the Vietnam War, or at least the Vietnam War as we know it, you know, with, with kind of US involvement, um, a direct, this is a direct follow on from, from uh, US departure, basically from Vietnam, or not full on departure, but at least, you know, at this point they weren't really there in a full combat role, they were more kind of advisory role, just kind of simmering down, um, getting everything in order to, to actually pull out. Um, so this basically covers, um, was known as kind of like uh, the, the Black April um, attacks or event offensive, whatever you want to call it, which is where basically North Viet um, North Vietnam claimed a victory in the, in that particular war by um, just pretty much decimating the um, ARVN forces and just doing this massive wide scale push throughout the whole country, which eventually culminated in them um, taking Saigon. So this expansion is looking specifically at these three very pivotal years. So you've got the kind of last year of major US involvement all the way up to the fall of Saigon. Um, what's really interesting about this is it's going to bring a bit more of a diplomatic, a few more diplomatic um, mechanics to the game, which I'm really excited to delve into and see how that works as well. So um, enough talking, let's have a look. First of all, I just want to say I really like this cover. I think it's very evocative of the era and I think it works really nicely as well with, um, with the Fire and the Lake cover. It's got the same kind of colour scheme and it, it just, I don't know, it just looks really nice. Nice kind of, I think it's the two inch box, back of the box there. You can uh, you can read that for yourself. Um, so yeah, let's take a look. So first things first, uh, one thing I love about GMT games is their playbooks. They're kind of like, you know, they get kind of extended tutorial, um, non-player tutorial and then it kind of breaks down all the uh, Ooh, that's not the right place. Yeah, it breaks down all the event cards here, gives you some kind of um, uh, historic background, uh, some tips for why you might want to play them or how you can play them, um, which is really cool. I always like to read through these, just kind of get a sense of what's going on and why certain cards do what. Um, there's usually also, yeah, design notes, which are always really good, really in depth, um, and some developer notes in there as well. So I'll have a proper read of that later. So that's the playbook there. 
Uh, this is, I believe, the yeah the non-player rules. So this is the solo bot rules. Um, I've been playing Fire in the Lake with the the Trung bot, and I think this is a very similar system. So hopefully we'll be able to pick that up quite quickly. Obviously, there's going to be new mechanics in the game, and um, the the um, probably different victory conditions. So the factions are going to have a different kind of um, emphasis on certain things. So yeah, this is the non-player rules. I should add, sorry, this playbook's come up to thirty-six pages. This one is 20, but you know, GMT rule books, I never really have many issues with deciphering the rules or getting bogged down in certain things are always really nicely laid out and the important things are always highlighted really nicely. So yeah, it doesn't look like too much to take in if you're familiar with that solo system anyway, but if you're not, I found the trunk system a lot more difficult to um, to implement than the than the charts, but I do actually prefer it. I didn't think I would, but I massively do. Uh, here we've just got the, the rules for the expansion. Um, I'd imagine... Um, so one of the, the things, well, if you've played um, uh, Colonial Twilight by Brian Train, there's a, it's a two-player game. I think in the, in the Black April um, scenario in this game, it is two-player, or potentially four-player. I'm not quite sure how that works yet, so that's cool. I really enjoy that um, system. So yeah, rule book once again, really nicely laid out. Actually, probably the smallest, shortest um, uh, booklet in here. So yeah, one of the big things in this game is you actually get to enact the Paris Peace Talks and that kind of sets up how the final years play out. Um, so you could actually, uh, you could actually end up um, retaining US involvement in the war, um, VC might also stick around, because at this point, basically in the fall of Saigon, it was pretty much NVA versus ARVN, um, head to head. So that's really cool. So you get some like alternate history kind of stuff going on there. Um, I'm sure the coup runs work differently. I won't get too into this just yet. Um, yeah, another thing as well is this US posture check, which I'm really excited to see. This again, more of the diplomatic, um, element to this um, expansion, which I, again, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Um, it's just an unboxing here, but eventually I imagine I will do a review <coughs> or a playthrough. And um, they've got some scenarios here. So yeah, you've got an extended short scenario. So this runs from uh, 72 to 75. So this is where you could potentially keep um, the US involved. Um, so I'll be interested to see how that works. That's really cool. And then, um, you can, it also now allows you to play from 68 to 75, or you can literally do 64 to 1975, which would be very long, but very, very cool to play. Um, I think you just kind of set that up as normal and then bring in the, um, the new cards, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, and then you've got your two player only scenario, which is ARVN versus NBA head to head, um, the Black Apple scenario, which is kind of the main uh, one of the main focuses of this expansion. Um, alongside this as well, there's another expansion coming out, I'm not sure when, called Sovereign of Discord, which um, I'm really, really excited for. So this covers the final years of the war. Sovereign of Discord will cover the, the early years of the war, so when the US were there kind of training and advising more than anything, which will be really cool. So eventually you can play from pretty much the start of US involvement right up until the bitter end, which is very cool. I'm going to need some time to do that, but... Uh, I'd love to do that one day, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, um, I'll probably start with the two-player scenario just to get a sense of the new mechanics and then kind of work my way through those. Okay, so we've got uh, some counters, it's pretty massive counters actually. So that's the new, um, that's the two-player initiative track there from Colonial Twilight. I guess you just kind of pop that in front of the board. And then we've got this US, uh, US posture track, sorry I went a bit Dutch there. Uh, yeah, US posture track. Again, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but looking at it now, I think it kind of will work similar to the um, to the Ho Chi Minh Trail track in uh, the base game. And wherever the US lie, um, that will inform how much they can do, or it might give boost to the ARVN, I think. I'll have to look into this, uh, but yeah. Pretty cool. We've just got some... Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what these are. I think this track's here. 
see how those come into play. And these are, looks like two new um, victory conditions here. So support and available, minus anti-war, NBA bases, minus war weary. war weary. Again, not entirely sure, but I'm sure I'll figure it out soon. We've got some new capabilities here, which will be awesome. And I think these are some errata counters. Uh, one of the other big uh, new things for the coin series in this expansion is uh, armor. We've got ARVN armor and uh, NVA armor, which looks like can be captured by uh, the other side, which is cool, or destroyed. Again, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work. I did watch a while ago um, Mark Herman kind of explaining some of this. Um, I said like a gaming convention, I think it's the, a player's A video. Um, I can't quite remember exactly what he said about the tanks and US posture and things like that, but uh, it's very cool to see this kind of thing. Um, I always enjoy uh, military games when they have this kind of element of diplomacy within them as well and it's going to be really interesting to see how um, the coin system kind of adapts to, to armour because it seems like this, whilst obviously there's still going to be that political hearts and minds stuff going on, it seems like this is going to be like full on conflict, more of an actual war game really than, um, than any other coin game, potentially, I don't really know. So these are the new um, player aids for the game. They look pretty much the same, but you've got these yellow highlights here, which which, um, which will have some differences. Again, I won't delve too deeply into this just yet. Um, so you've got Viet Cong, uh, ARVN, and Spearhead is the new big um, special activity for them, which kind of utilizes tanks and troops, and you can mobilize pretty quickly. Um, I think the US can, yeah, they can actually airstrike now on the ARVN's behalf. Um, so this is cool. Again, just kind of... This is what I like about the coin series, you know, once you, once you know how to play one, it's very easy to... Um, well, not very easy, but it's, it's easier than it would be if you're coming into this fresh to kind of adapt. Um, just kind of glancing over this now, it does look like there'll be a lot more politics involved. A few more things to remember. Um, it seems like the US are going to transition if this then involved to way more of an air advisory role with a lot of airstrikes and the ARVN have been bolstered quite a bit by the looks of things with a new special activity and now the, the ability to airlift and airstrike now as well, potentially at the same time by the look of things. And then we've got the NVA on the back there, again they've got Spearhead 2. Um, just highlighting some of the changes from the base game. So you usually get four of these. Two, three, yep, four of those. Um, this is for the uh, the solitaire, or, you know, kind of, um, yeah, this will be solitaire. Uh, player aid to, um, it's hard to explain. I'm sure there is a word for it. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Basically, you use this in conjunction with the new uh, solo system. Uh, it's the same with the trunk card. And you just have these priorities lists here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Which you kind of follow. It was a bit confusing to me at first, but um, once you get the grip of it, it's actually really intuitive. Uh, this, however, was probably the most confusing thing about the new solo system for me, which is the move priorities. Um, but again, I've got that figured out a bit better now, so hopefully this won't take too long to pick up. And then we've got a card list on the back, which will tell you which uh, what cards the bot wants to play. So that's for the, um, the Black April only, I think, because that's the two-player one. So I'm sure there'll be another one for the four player. Um, yeah, got the coup round card here, just the player aid, so it tells you how the coup round goes. And we've got the Paris Peace Talks card here again. Again, I'm not too sure how this works yet, but looking forward to getting, delving into it and seeing how it goes. Um, again, I'm really excited about this prospect of all this, this diplomatic stuff within the game and how it's going to affect the, um, the outcome of the final years. So that's really cool. Um, I don't know if you play the full game, if you'd make it that far without losing. I kind of hope so, because that would be awesome to see how like your progress within the game affects these Paris Peace Talks, um, which in history were a bit of a, I don't know, a wild goose chase, I guess, because they didn't really, didn't really amount to anything. Uh, I've got another one here, same thing. Uh, Non-player coup round instructions. Again, just dense, solitaire stuff. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's pretty easy and you kind of start to remember a few things, it becomes really intuitive, but 
this was quite alienating to me at first. Um, we've got specific event instructions in the back there. This is uh, for four player extended scenario and potentially the Fall of Saigon scenario if you make it that far with all four players. And then this one is just for the two player scenario. Apologies about the helicopter. And then we've got another solitaire play aid here this time, I think. Yeah, if you've got four players, basically. We've got move priorities and cards again. So yeah, a lot of stuff so far. Yeah, a lot of player aids, counter sheets, obviously rules. Good start on it. Always need some rules, the playbook, and the player aids. So once again, GMT really giving you your money's worth. Um, and I haven't even gotten to the cards yet. So here we go. This let's start. Let's start here actually. Uh, so yeah, these are the new uh, armor pieces. So we've got MVA, ARVN. So these are essentially tanks, you know, armored vehicles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Interest to see how those work. It's going to bring a really cool new dynamic to um, to coin, I think. And then on top of that, it just looks like the ARVN gets some uh, some extra bases and some extra um, rangers as well. These are like special forces, capable of doing raids, staying a bit more incognito with your elite troops. I really like how these work in the game. So yeah, you got some NVA armor, ARVN armor there, some new bases and some rangers. I think the, yeah, these are the new um, solo pads. Nice new sized. Um, the other ones are quite small. Don't know why they've gone this way, but it looks quite nice there. So these are just essentially little flow charts which you go through. Um, I'll have a proper look at these later. Similar to the to the Trung um, bot and the one in Gandhi. And I think the one in All Bridges Burnie as well. So that's cool. Always nice. Um, I'm not sure how many people actually play these solo. I would assume a fair amount. I'm kind of, you know, I think I have played coin with, with some of my mates and they have enjoyed it, but I, I understand, um, you know, it's a, very, it's a very specific hobby and I don't want to force it on people, but um, it would be nice to play this with some people, but I love the solo mode in these games. I think they're awesome. And from what I can tell, they are pretty spot on to, um, to how it feels to actually play against other people. So yeah, we've got a lot, a lot of new cards here. And these are just, I don't like to look at these too much before I play. I like to kind of be surprised as they come up, so I won't delve into these too much, but just give you a quick look. These are just kind of um, major events that happened in this uh, in, um, within the conflict. And what I like about Fire in the Lake is that the cards are actually dated, so you can actually you can either just mix them all together, or you can use specific cards for um, specific scenarios. It's got loads of cool looking stuff here. Uh, new capabilities by the look of things. Very nice. Saw him, Pol Pot. Bit of an arsehole, to say the least. Yeah, very cool. A lot of cool new stuff here. And I would assume, so these go from 73 up to 75. New Q cards as well. Interesting. Watergate. Nixon resigns, Saigon stands alone. Very cool. I don't know exactly how these work, but it seems like they're going to be uh, sequential, so they'll always come up in this order. Um, again, sorry, I don't have a lot of answers for you today. I'm kind of just, I don't really like to look into things too much um, before I open them, before I play them. I do to an extent, obviously, but I just like, I like to be surprised, basically. So yeah, I think it said 80. Uh, 104 new cards, 79 new events, which is very cool see how these integrate into the rest of the game. And then on top of that, you've got four new pivotal events. Chords Enforced, Spring Offensive, Retrenchment, and Popular Mobilization. And I think this is like an errata card for um, the US Trongbot. So yeah, very cool. Like I said, a lot of stuff here. Um, really get your money's worth. And just adding more and more <laughs> hours of play, I guess, to a, to a game which already boasts so much replayability, which is really cool. And um, I'm really looking forward as well to the Sovereign of Discord um, expansion when that comes out. 
because I'd love to play from, I think it's that one starts in the 61 all the way up to 1975. So yeah, I'll, um, I've got actually an extended scenario um, game of Fire in the Lake on the go at the moment, so I might play that in the meantime, try and learn this, and if I make it through to 1972, I might try and implement the Paris Peace Talks into the game I've got going on, which would be really cool. But I think the best way to learn this and all the new mechanics and the solitaire system would to probably probably be just to play the um, the two-player Black April scenario. So yeah, that was a look inside Fall of Saigon uh, expansion for Fire and the Light. Thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed.